Um, so I'll just say my name is Rag. For those of you who doesn't know me, I'm in Montreal in my home, like most of you probably in your home. Um, you know, though these are a difficult moment, but uh, now I guess uh, we're discovering a lot of new technology, how we could continue on sharing our passion and uh, education knowledge with other. So that to say, I always say to my classes, we learn something new every day. And this week, this has been my learning is how to be able to share with you guys uh, um, education via uh, internet and stuff like that. So it's a brand new discovery. So I, this is my third presentation this week. Um, so in the practices, I'm getting a little bit better every day, managing all the questions popping up and managing the slides and stuff like that at the same time. So uh, it's pretty exciting to see how this is doing and how you're capable of reaching people from all around the world. Um, today, I'm going to be presenting a topic. It's on white hair coverage. I think this is one of always the biggest challenge we encounter in salon is uh, making sure that we achieve proper white hair coverage. After all, this is why the client comes and sees us. And that's why they're paying the money for is to get a customized formula that is achieving what they're looking for. So I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of the tips and hints of how do I manage that and some key elements of what it's needed for us to assess the hair properly to find the right formula to give us the result that we're looking for. And we have all, sometimes we have a tendency of forgetting these. Um, so I'm just going to go and upload the presentation, but just before um, you have any question, please feel free to ask. I have the chat room that is uh, just uh, open next to the presentation, so I get to see your question popping up. Um, you could always, uh, you're always welcome. Okay, so let's go and upload this presentation. So here it is, and share. Good. Oh, I don't see the question anymore, Jack. Is there a way for me to see them while I'm presenting or not? Uh, yeah. It depends. Or you have it on your phone. Oh, okay. So I could open it on the phone too and see. Okay, let me do that. I thought the chat was still opening while I was... Uh, I apologize, everyone, for that. First time with Zoom today. So I will open it. I will keep the uh, camera off the phone. Okay. Oh, there's an Ooh, echo. There's an echo. Not, good. not good. Not good, not good. No. I think you have to mute the microphone on the on the phone. Okay, I'll redo it again. And the end, yeah. Nope. The other option is that, like every ten minutes, you interrupt the presentation and go and go through the chat if anyone has okay. any I question. Put sound, I put the sound off. And where is the chat? Okay, chat. Okay, so sound is off and I get to see the chat. Perfect. Done. Sorry, guys. Okay. okay. Something new that I just learned again. <laughs> okay, so welcome into my white hair mixology. Um, so first, before we get started, I just wanted to, i um, just going to lower the this section okay good uh, just make sure if you want to take some notes of what I'm going to share with you so you could refer to it into uh, the day or into the next few days or when you go back into the salon um, raise your hand give me a shout if you have any question um, don't hesitate to ask through the chat um, so raise your hand because I think there's a thing on zoom that where you could just raise your hand so I get the attention and uh, please also to make sure that your microphone are all on mute so that we don't hear anybody's noise into the background that could interfere during the presentation. Um, okay, so let's get started. So this program is part of the Color Mentoring Foundation Origin. Um, so those are the uh, pro tips module that I'm building for the program. Um, this also too will be available as a full day class eventually with uh, when we're back 
in the reality of our world, being able to attend classes. Um, so today we're just presenting you an hour presentation. So how do we achieve best white hair coverage? Pro tips. I'm gonna share with you a little bit my experience in that category. Um, white hair coverage is not just about coverage. Um, it's more than that now. And it's gonna be more than that, especially after what's happening right now when we're going back into salon. Um, we're gonna to have to justify the quality of our services in the salon, justify the value of the services versus to the competition we have right now, which is called home coloring. And don't be fooled because home coloring now is getting more and more um, up to date into the market. Now there's a website where they're offering custom blend formulation delivered to your door for $19.95. And what it or not, the client right now are getting the practice of applying the services to their hair. So therefore, um, they're getting to see if they're going a good result. And some of them may not achieve so, so good results. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging inviting them back to the salon. And what I mean by that is that when they're going to come back, our service have to justify the value, meaning that we're gonna to have to elevate our standard and we're gonna work twice as hard as what we used to, to make the same count amount of money that we used to. Um, so today's uh, white hair coverage is basically the client are looking for more of a holistic approach to salon service. So what I mean by this is they're looking for personalizing service for clients own signature color. So something that is really unique to them. Um, a youthful hair color appearance that will suit them. So this is our job by understanding the client's needs, um, her emotional attraction to color, what will be the best color suited to them with our guidance. Um, hair care system that works for their skin and their hair, as well as high quality product and service. Well, the high quality product and services is not that hard because um, we're already working with a excellent brand that I think for me that is high quality and um, one of the best brand on the market today, which is Davinus. So naturally all of the above is related to the keys related to is the consultation. Consultation plays a very important role um, into hair color. And it's, it's interesting because um, the perception of what a consultation is for a client and the perception of what a consultation is for a hairdresser or a colorist, sometimes it's two different world. Um, there was a, uh, um, a survey done a one, long time ago, well, not long time ago, a few years ago, and um, by a, a big firm, and they were asking hairdresser, um, do you conduct consultation with every new client that comes into your salon? And 97% of the hairdressers said yes. And then they asked clients to go into these salons, to go get their service done for the first time. And when the client came back, they asked, how many of you have received a consultation? And only a mere 7% said they did. So the perception of consultation is different. So let's go see a little bit how I like to approach consultation. So this is the holistic insulin service consultation desk. Um, there's four step into this desk, so keep it simple. Four step, very easy. First one, it's to build the trust. Identify your client's need to achieve the satisfaction. And how do we do that? It's make the client feel listened to. Um, develop the five minutes to care. This is a, a new added uh, step that's in Davenous, five minutes to care. And um, which you will start to see in a lot of the classes, which will be uh, in the future. And that five minutes, this is where you're creating the connection with your client. You're taking time to listen, to see, first of all, what she likes about her hair color, um, maybe what she doesn't like about her hair color, and if there's anything that she would like to change. And never be afraid to ask this question. Every time my client comes to the salon, even though if it's been six weeks, I always ask, how's your hair color? Um, is there anything you would you like to change or add to your color or something like that? Because, you know, um, emotional change about your taste. Sometimes you want a little bit lighter, sometimes you want a little bit darker, sometimes you want to add dimension into it. So always take time to listen to your client, what she has to say about her color and what she's attracted to. Second step is understand the needs. Check the hair and scalp, define the right in salon service because we have different services that we could offer a client. And that's very important to take the time to assess the hair, 
uh, feel the hair, feel the scalp, the condition of the scalp. Is the condition of the scalp dry? Um, is it irritated? Um, does it have blisters? How's the hair quality? Is the hair fine, medium, coarse? Um, is it very porous? Is it chemically damaged or not? Um, all of that. So it's very important information that we need to know prior to uh, develop the formulation and apply. So those are information that we need to gather to assess proper technical service and formulation. Um, explain the specific care and color uh, needs. So make sure your client is aware of what is needed to achieve desired result. Um, respects client wishes. Always ask your client, um, what's your budget today, especially new clients, um, so that you know if there's a limit into their budget. And then if you're not capable of fitting the desired service within the budget, let her know and offer her alternative service that may work her color towards what she's looking for. Third services for me, it's personalized. This is where we create basically the own signature formula for the clients for the recommended technical service that you're gonna be doing. Um, so explain what you're doing to the client. Um, elevate your technical skills. Make sure your application is impeccable because unfortunately what I mean by elevating our standard in that is client applying color at home. Then after the application, if she was to sit in the chair and were to take a picture and sometime a certain client in salons uh, that have color in the head, once the color is applied on the head, if we were to take a picture of the application of the processing of the color, and we were to look at either one, uh, sometimes they could be a little bit similar there. Um, so the client will ask herself, if the application looks similar to what I'm capable of doing home, and especially now more than ever, um, what's the difference between 1995 to 50, 60, or $80 application service in Swan? Yes, you're personalizing services as for color formula, but now they could get customized formula online. So we need to make sure that our technical application is impeccable, professional, and clean. I always like give a reference if you go to um, a makeup counter, a high-end makeup counter like Chanel, Dior, Yves Saint Laurent, um, all of those kind of counter, and you were to arrive and get your makeup services done and you arrive and uh, the brushes are dirty, the surrounding is a bit messy, um, and stuff like that, how would you feel? How comfortable would you feel about that? Um, so it's the same thing. So put yourself into position. How does the client feel when she's on your chair? How would you feel if you were the client on that chair? Um, let your client know the processing time uh, so she's aware of how long it's going to take before you proceed to the next step. Um, and connect your clients once you're done, when you're going to the service, connect her services with the home recommended care uh, system. So this is where she has the experience of smelling the product, feeling the quality and the performance of the product you have selected for her hair. The fourth uh, segment of the consultation disc is care. So clients care in future visits. Share the secret and identify the hair care needs to maintain the perfect color. Um, there's a rule of, usually in retailing, is always present three products that is needed for the hair. Don't present three just to present three. Present three for a reason, specific reason that is needed for her hair. You will see my end of my presentation. I will cover that segment. And usually um, in the rule of three, they often purchase a three product or at least one out of the three. Um, if you go to any cosmetic counter, um, when you go and see for makeup or purchase products, skincare and stuff like that, their rule of thumb is always to present you three products at the same time um, because that's kind of the structure of retailing. So provide her with the product, some hint and tips of how to use a recommended home care product, especially create her um, a dossier or a profile card or into your computer system for the client um, so that you are aware of the formulation that was done, you're aware of the result that you have, and you're also too aware of the retail product that you recommended to the client. Um, knowing that is on her next visit first is there's a situation with the color, you have a formula, you applied it on the hair, you have a result, now you are capable of modifying the formula to whatever there is needed to adjust. And also you could always follow up on the retail product that you provided the client. 
Um, rebook visit. You know the service you provided to the client. So if it's a new color retouch, if it's a color from um, uh, highlighting techniques and stuff like that, you know when is the next service. So when the client is checking out the salon, always try to make sure to uh, invite the client or the guest to reschedule her next visit to your salon. Um, it's helped the client to maintain her services and at the same time, it keeps your agenda busy, which is the positive side of that. Okay, so this is the uh, circle of services. So again, number one, build the trust. Number two, understand the need. Number three, personalize your services. And number four, clients care. So making sure that her color always looked to the best. Okay. Um, Jack, if you're still there, or Nancy, could you just send me a question? Yeah. It pops up on my phone, just in case, because I don't see anything so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, from Davis. Yeah, I receive a high. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's go see into touch and feel the hair. So the science of changing hair and skin, why is it important to understand the three symptoms of aging? Um, well, first of all, it's loss of pigment. Um, with age, unfortunately, the melanocyte, which is a gland that produces the melanin into the hair and for our skin at the same time, um, kind of get lazy with time and eventually it gets so lazy that it's not producing melanin anymore and this is why we get white hair. And also, too, that we're losing complexion within our skin, so a little bit less and less pigment at a time. So this is caused by the laziness of the melanocyte with time. Okay, um, so therefore, that's why that when people are aging um, with white hair, we often say put a little bit of makeup to give you some color to go get that youthful appearance. Hair color also, too, is a cosmetic that we can offer to the hair to give you back that youthful appearance again. So also, too, the second step is hair becomes dry, dull, flat, and coarse, or it could also go most of the time fine. And what I mean by coarse, it goes coarse and a little bit kind of like um, rebel, a little bit kind of like um, harder kind of texture, weirder texture sometimes. So with age, your hormonal fluctuation uh, either tends to dry, uh, thinning the skin in a bit, the follicle. So therefore by tightening that follicle at the scalp area, um, it, the hair becomes either finer or you lose density of hair at the same time. Uh, this is a, a step that often people don't want to treat their scalp. And what I mean by treating their scalp is using like proper conditioner, uh, proper shampoo uh, for them. So I always give an example to the client. Um, you use skincare to, for your face. And she said, yes. And why do you use skincare for your face? Well, because I don't want my skin to dry. I want to moisturizing it so it, my skin looks good, healthy, and naturally for maintaining youthful appearance. Okay, so if I were to say, stop using your skincare for a month, what would happen? And she said, well, I wouldn't do that. I said, why? Because my skin will dry, and if it dries, become sensitive, will become itchy. So I said, well, it's the same with your scalp. The scalp is basically the continuity of your face, but you don't see it. So therefore, there's skin underneath that hair. And if you do not hydrate it and you do not take care of it properly, you lose that hydration. And so the skin becomes tighter, tighter, the follicle tightens up. And the follicle by tightening up either have some hair that stops growing, which brings you to loss of density. And we see that with our a mature clientele. And that they say, well, I used to have more hair than that. And also too, sometimes the hair goes a little bit thinner and thinner. And they say, I used to have thicker hair than that. And often this is caused by not taking care of your scalp properly, not giving it its moisture that is needed to maintain its elasticity and its health to be able to produce healthier growth of hair. The third one is hair is increasingly vulnerable against the element. Um, white hair, when we have pigmented hair, pigmented hair basically ask, act as a UV protector to your scalp. 
um, when the hair is white, you lost the pigment, which was your UV protection. So therefore, um, you're becoming more um, sensitive to uh, the influence of that. And also to, um, we have a tendency to think that white hair, because it's white, um, that it's easy, it's hard to cover, it's difficult, but actually white hair is very vulnerable, very easy to color. It's not the white that's difficult, it is the shield that is around the white hair, which the shield is the cuticle layers that makes it hard to cover. So it's two different things, the white or the cuticle. So now let's go see into touch and feel the hair. Um, so basically hair diameter, hair uh, thickness is described as a hair diameter. So basically determining if the hair is um, thick, determining if the hair is medium texture or determine if it's fine. And so you can see here basically that I have um, thick, medium and fine hair. And our product recommendation is 35 minutes and it's based on standard uh, textured hair. So if we take that 35 minutes now and we applied it on fine hair, on standard textured hair, or on coarse hair, you see that little green light that travel, line, not light, that travel. Um, so you see here that basically the fine hair, the center is over here. So you see that the green line have passed the center. If I'm looking into the standard, it's right into the center. And if I'm looking at the course, it hasn't reached the center there. So what this is telling you is that basically when I work with fine hair, fine hair will accept color much more faster than coarse hair. And so just so hold on, something happened with the phone. So I think I logged out. So I cannot see the question. I'm going back. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so fine hair have a tendency of absorbing color pretty fast. Uh, but however, there's fine hair that could be resistant also. And how do we difference it? Um, fine hair that is flat, not light reflecting, is very easy to absorb color. However, if you have fine hair with very glossy finish, the glossier it is, the more resistant, the more tenacious it is. So therefore, um, you need to take that in consideration. So fine hair is usually found around the hairline. And often, sometimes I, I hear that, that I apply the color and they go and apply the color first around the hairline, then it turns out dark, turn in the rest. And we just say that basically either that the color over oxidize uh, and stuff like that. It's not over oxidize. It's basically it's fine hair that absorb too much pigment. So that's what we need to know. And in standard hair in the case here will accept color in more of a standard rate. Then coarser hair will take a longer. So if you had a head shape and into that head, you have the back of the nape, which is coarse hair, and you're arriving to the front, which is fine hair. Well, you will need to decide where you start your application and how you adjust your processing time. Um, so basically, I would start my application in the nape because here we recommend if you're working with coarse hair to reach a center for optimal deposit to increase processing time to 45 minutes. So therefore, this will change to 45. If fine hair is in the front, you could reduce five or 10 minutes, depending on the hair that you're working with. So therefore, the processing time will become 30 to 25 minutes. So that way you're balancing. So it's a little bit of a different way of approaching than if we were always told that white hair, we start where white hair is in the front. It's not always the case, because therefore you could end up with darker color in the front. However, very important to remember, if the fine hair in the front of the hairline is very glossy, therefore it's resistant. So in that case, then you could start your application in the front immediately then going into the back of your procedure to make sure that you have um, even color, okay? Next step, 
hair density. Uh, so when we touch and feel the hair, we have seen how much density there is. The density could influence how much color mixture is needed. Do you need 40 gram, do you need 50 gram, or do you need 30 gram, depending on the density of the hair that you're working with. Um, hair color result, um, that's one thing that is very important, hair color result. Um, let me see, there's something that appeared on the top that says more, now that is gone. So just wanted to see if there was something in chat. No question. No question, okay. I see nothing on my phone, Jack, so I guess it's okay. okay. What's this more? Uh, seven people in chat. Oh, there is. So the chat is not showing on my phone. I apologize, guys. I just now see it here. Um, type message. Uh, Glossia, everything is perfect, clear. Perfect. Okay, good. Now I see it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So here, let's go and take a look here at density. How does density look like here? So here you have normal density. Um, so as you could see, you see the hair going around here. And now I'm going to show you a fine density. Um, here is we have a lower density here. Just by the visual, the picture is already showing you a differences. The one with lower density, it's showing you that the color is lighter. Okay, so then if I go and add one that has high density, the high density already show you that the color looks darker. So this will influence your color result. And by what I mean, if I were to use like an example, an 844 in here, and applying on finer hair, the color will look lighter. Okay, so it will look like more maybe towards a nine. So now is that what you want? Usually color line doesn't mind to be lighter, but like an 844 looking more like a nine, the client may want it to look more like a real 844. However, on the opposite side, the color may look darker due to the high concentration of amount per uh, centimeter square or inch square, um, the color may look darker. So therefore, you may want to formulate it differently, add a little bit lighter color into it. So in the case of going darker, are going lighter is here I would add up to 25, not add, but I would substitute 25% of my formula for a lighter level into it to, um, sorry, uh, not, uh, not lighter, I apologize. Let me recap this. Here, I would put 25% of my formula A darker level and here it would be 25% of my formula would be one level lighter so the color looks more true to targets so is how to balance your color in here okay so just gonna go check if there's anything else into question good perfect Okay, so is there any question for density? I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so now choosing the type of color. Um, that's another thing too that's very important that you need to choose a type of coverage it is. And whenever a client comes into the salon, if it's a new client, um, I always like to ask a little bit of like, um, what was the previous brand that was using your hair? Uh, we know on the market today, there's two types of finishing existing. There's one that is more kind of like more saturated, a word that I don't like to use much in front of a client, more opaque finish. So it's like much more uniform as a color. And there's a colors that are multi-reflected. So multi-reflected is a color that gives you a lot of that dimensional into the hair. So, um, there's two type of finishing and by finding what the first client visit your salon, what she was utilizing for will help you to choose the appropriate uh, color system uh, for her, which you know that at Davinus we offer two permanent color hairline. Um, the two permanent hair color line that we offer, one is called a new color. 
So as you could see here, the new color disc that just appeared on top um, is giving you a look that is more of a classic coverage, full saturation and more of a velvety finish of the color. Um, so that's like the color has more weight. So therefore it is much more uniform as a finish as a result. The other color we have is Mask with Vibrochrome. And Mask with Vibrochrome is a modern coverage. It's more for today's kind of look, today's type of finishing, which you're looking for that youthful appearance. And if we're looking at the natural hair, a teenage or a younger child hair, you're seeing all that dimension into the hair, all those different colors. And that's what Mask with Vibrochrome type of finish it is. Um, so as you could see here, as you see here is the multi-reflected and you're seeing here that is a much more even saturation. Um, naturally, one is non-ammonia and the other one is an ammonia-based color. Um, so that's also to a difference there in that category. So if you had a client that was utilizing previously more of an opaque finish color, um, an example, um, if you were more saturated, Wella, Schwarzkopf, uh, L'Oréal Magirel, um, this kind of color gives you more of that saturation look. So when you would apply a mask with Vibrochrome after first application would be perfect, second and third. No, the third application, this is where the client will start to notice the difference. Now the difference that you see is the perception that it may give her it says, well, the coverage is different previously to what I have before. Yes, it is different. It is different because it is multi-reflected. So perception of client may say, well, did it cover properly two versus before or not? Um, it did cover 100%. It's just, it's a different type of finishing. Now, how to handle that challenge is basically you have two options. One option is adding a bit of dimension into the previous color by breaking it down. You could utilize our century of light. You could freehand paint a little bit of fine highlighting around the face. So it just gives you that more dimensional look into the mid length and end of the hair. Or maybe you wanted to change her color and go with more with a new color to deliver her a saturation that is more similar to what she used to have before. Um, so there's a question, is there? Um, okay, I saw a question thing popping up, but I don't see question. Everything is going fine. Morning, sending love from Miami. Everything is perfectly clear. Okay, so I just saw something popping up, but I'm not sure. Okay. Good. Okay, so I'll continue. So um, like I was saying, so basically the choice of the product you're, you're going to choose, it will depend on through the connection you're doing with your client to see what she's looking for. So next one, I'll say, so what do you think when you think of white hair? First thing that pops up in your mind, I'm pretty convinced that the first thing that's going to pop up into your mind is first, it's going to say, oh, it's resistant. Second thing is going to say, oh, it's hard to cover. And your go-to when you're going to want to cover what hair, I'm sure a lot of hairdresser goes immediately to what? Double natural. So this is often their security blanket and go-to because they want to make sure the formula they're doing is going to give them what hair coverage. Well, it's not my go-to at all for me, um, actually. This is more, um, I use a double natural if I wanna have a natural end result. So I use it as covered and target base. I rarely mix it into uh, my fashion tone because it does say the word double natural. So the weight of that series is much more heavier. So it does affect or it does, um, alter the color result that you're looking for. So this is not my go-to and I achieve very good white hair coverage. Okay, so let's go see how it works. So let's do ourselves a little reminder um, onto um, white hair uh, or natural family. Uh, so here is we have our natural. I refer to it as neutral because neutral for me is the comma zero. So this is what neutral is. Um, what is the base of our natural neutral series? It's a gray, bluish base. So the word you need to remember, there's a little bit of blue in there. 
and blue is the opposite of your warm tone. So therefore, being the opposite of your warm tone, it will mute down your warm series when mixed with it. If the client has choose a 7.4, um, a 34, um, a 0.3, well, that's what they want as an end result. They didn't ask necessarily a color to be muted down. So therefore, net choosing the natural family that is appropriate to is very important. The next natural family we have, we have our 0.1, our natural cool series. Our natural cool series could be used on their own for a client that wishes to have that cool uh, natural finish and they're amazing on their own. Um, however, I like to give a little bit more color to my clients. So I like to always to mix them with a reflected tone to give them a little bit of color. Because remember, we lose pigmentation in skin and actually with the hair, that's why they're visiting us. So we need to give them a little bit of color so they are looking a little bit more like um, alive, a little bit more energizing. The next one is Natural Warm Series, a series that I like a lot. So this is a series that I will use a lot. Um, its base is more of an orange gold base. Um, it's naturally recommended for warm color direction and it will support your warm fashion tones. So it says it all. So whenever I'm working with fashion tone, it is a natural base that I go and get for my white hair coverage. Following that is I do have my double natural. Again, I use the word neutral because of the zero being a neutral base. The double natural has the same base of your natural series above. Um, so it's a grayish blue uh, color. So that's why that you're seeing the bar below is kind of a gray bluish tint. Um, so it will influence your warm tone but not really only influence your warm tone is since that it's double the base, so double eight example, or double three, double six, um, it has more weight. So therefore, by having more weight into it, it will darken your color a little bit. So when you're using your double natural, we have to be smart how we're utilizing. We have to remember that it's double the amount of pigments, so that's the influence in your color formula. And so therefore, if we're using it like standard that we would use the other here, um, we will end up with darker color. So let's go see a little bit, how do we see? So as you could see here, it is a series that I rarely use. So I don't use much of the double natural, only in exceptional cases where the hair is a little bit more rebel. So naturally following that um, is, um, I just want to see any question. I don't know. I'm not sure if the question uh, works or not. The chat room works or not because it seemed to be fixed there. There's nothing popping up. It hasn't moved. So, okay. So Vanat, when talking about your cool color, you add more color like what? Uh, so when I use my cool color is I would use example, you could use your um, 31 if you want to have it a little bit more cooler, your 14 series, uh, which is your ash uh, copper tone, I would use my 0.1 natural family. Um, I will definitely give you some example. Thank you, Sylvana, for uh, writing. So it gives me a chance to see that it's working. Uh, so everything is good. Thank you, Sandra and Michael. Uh, I think it works. Perfect. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Okay. So hydrogen peroxide. Um, so here at the bottom, you see the molecule of the um, here, the peroxide. What is the molecule structure? The science code identification. And here, this will be ammonia that you're seeing here. Um, so basically, when we mix peroxide and uh, with our color, uh, permanent color, we have two choices in permanent color, either an ammonia-based color or an MEA. Uh, mass with vibrochrome is ammonia, a new color is MEA. Uh, when hydrogen peroxide and an alkali um, is combined together, uh, we get a chemical reaction which actually trigger the start of the product. Um, so ammonia cannot start on its own or MEA without the peroxide and the peroxide cannot start its uh, lift and oxidation uh, without the ammonia or the MEA. Both has to be mixed together. I had an earlier question saying, well, if you put both in the bowl without mixing them, does it trigger it? No, you have nothing to worry about. It's only on the surface as long as you do not mix them together because often I will mix 
um, two bowls or three bowls, depending on the color I'm using in a technical application I'm doing. And I'm mixing the color when ready within this section. Um, so there's no problem. And the peroxide being into your bowl at the same time or your activator, um, you will not lose strength because we have stabilizer into our activator that maintain the strength of, our acti uh, of the activator. So what happens? So basically when both products are mixed together, the first chemical reaction will happen is the release of the alkalinity, the, the, the ammonia or the MEA. And the role of that product is to soften the shield around the hair. So if you remember, I say white hair is vulnerable and what's not vulnerable is the shield that's around it, which is the cuticle. So the ammonia will start to soften that structure of the hair and start to open the cuticle. So now the amount of cuticle will vary depending on the ethnicity uh, origin or the uh, cross mix of ethnicity. We'll have different hair texture. Um, we have hair that has less cuticle. We'll have hair that could have up to seven layers of cuticle and we could have hair that has up to 14 layers of cuticle. And so that will influence the, the, the performance of the product for the target result. Um, so here is, um, after that, the cuticle that are open, the pigment will be able to penetrate the hair structure through the cuticle layers and reach the cortex. When it has reached the cortex, the hydrogen peroxide solution will start the polarization of the pigment, therefore developing the pigment into your target result that you're looking for. So here on your right side of your screen, you have a little diagram. So here you'll have the ammonia. Here you have the processing time that's going on. So when you're applying onto the hair, the first thing is going on is the release of the ammonia. Again, to basically to soften and open the cuticle. This is often where the client within the first 10 or 15 minutes that they say they feel that it's a little bit itchy, they feel that it's a little bit irritating um, on their scalp, especially if they do have a dry scalp. Um, yes, um, it, they could feel that sensitivity a little bit on their scalp. Um, there's many different solutions. Um, you could either say an example to some of my high lift clients, I would recommend a, a royal jelly uh, from nourishing from a natural tech family uh, that she applied a royal jelly uh, 24 hours prior to her salon services. So she's giving a high concentration of hydration to her scalp, giving you that additional nutriment to protect the scalp. Uh, when you're applying the product. So that's one way. And uh, so, but there's no problem in that. Usually it's gone within the first 10 or 15 minutes, because as you could see, the product is decreasing and decreasing towards the end of its processing time as ammonia strength, uh, because it's a gas. So here, simultaneously, you will have the polarization of the pigment happening. So therefore the pigment goes in colorless, very small. And once it enters into the cortex, it's, you have the coupler and the precursor and there's a coupling process happening, which is basically creating your larger color molecule. So this is the polarization and basically locking and trapping in the molecule into the hair. So as you can see, it takes up to its 35 minutes till it reached a proper amount of those pigment connecting together to give you desired result you're looking for, um, especially depending on the diameter of the hair you're working with. So here, let's see into our application. So here you have the little line here, which is kind of giving you, usually an application could take us up to 15 minutes. Um, so if it takes up to 15 minutes into your application, you're seeing there's a decrease of the ammonia. So if you need that ammonia strength because the hair is coarser, thicker, resistant, uh, like certain of my clients. Um, therefore, and you can mix two different bowls. And by mixing two different bowls is you are mixing one when you're ready to apply it to the back and you're putting it on the, the head. And then when you're arriving towards the front, then you're mixing your second bowl and you're applying the rest to the front. So therefore you're applying the product at its full strength. So here I have a big question. So I'm just gonna have to read it. Just, oh boy, it's a, like a text. There's something rock, uh, hold on. And okay, Rock, I have been working with Davinist for just a little time. Now, some of my clients have those 
grayish hair that are warmed up very much while oxidation. Um, when working with, okay, when working with other brand, I would double toner on the coverage, two to one. This way I got good color without changing their natural so much. Um, therefore, no warming, their natural tone here. In Brazil, we only, okay, so hair in Brazil, Brazilian hair has less cuticle layers, a lot of them. So the hair, yes, um, from Brazil, the texture of the hair that you have over there usually have less cuticle layers. So therefore you will reach the cortex much more faster. So if you work your formula in a much more standard way, you will create some lift of the natural pigment if you do not wish to do that. Um, in that case, how I would approach that is you're working with fine hair, you need to reduce a bit of your timing and your formulation is as simple as that. If you're strictly depositing color, I would utilize my double a five volume. So therefore I would utilize 40 gram of my mask with Vibrochrome in the desired formula that I'm looking for. And then I would mix it with um, two parts of your five volume activator. Um, so therefore you don't have a product that is going to provide you much of the lift. You will have more of a demi, but in your case, due to the hair diameter, you would have a permanent hair color deposit for fine hair. That's how I would approach um, that. I hope that answered your question uh, for, uh, for you. Okay, thank you. Let me know if it did answer your question. Okay, so, okay, thank you. Perfect. Um, okay, so here I'm just like continue so you see the difference. So this is often, like I say, if it here in 10 minutes, I would mix a new bowl if I'm working with coarser hair. If I have baby fine hair into the front and coarse hair in the back, then there's no problem. I start my application in the back. And when I will arrive to the front, then my solution has lost its strength. And therefore it is much more gentle into the front. So then you don't get that color being too dark. So this is where the importance of access the hair um, diameter into the head of our client. Is it the same type of hair diameter from the back to the front or does it have variation? And if it does have your variation, how do you start your application and how do you adjust your formulation in this case? Okay. Activator. Activator plays a very important role because I mentioned earlier you need one to activate the other. Uh, naturally, the best choice for white hair coverage is 20 volume in exception of a uh, um, special case like we just talked about. Um, so 20 volume will give you that. And uh, here you have your five and you have your 10. Rarely use it uh, for the simple reason is the amount of oxygen in your activator um, is the a proper amount to activate the right quantity of ammonia into your color. And we know that the ammonia or the alkaline solution, MEA, is needed to swell the hair. So therefore, if you use a 10, what you're getting with a 10 is you're not getting enough oxygen to trigger enough ammonia content into your formula. So therefore, there is not enough swelling or opening of the cuticle to permit the color to penetrate to that shield to reach the cortex. So you will get a weaker depositing and the color will have less of stability. Um, five volume um, is also two, you usually don't have enough. But in the case that I'm working with a hair that has like four layers of cuticle, um, example, um, African American hair, um, example, a Brazilian hair may have less cuticle layers uh, into it. Um, I could choose my five volume in that case here and work with it as for a depositing color only. So I'm working with it as more as a demi uh, alkaline color. There is where I would use my double natural for a more um, natural result um, and with optimal white hair coverage. So the double natural is giving me enough pigment base to cover the white hair uh, without altering much of the natural pigmented hair in this case because um, it is um, does not activate much ammonia into your color. Um, this is why that when you mix five volume with your color, you smell the product very strong. And we have a tendency to say, oof, 
I smell it very strong, so it must be aggressive. No, it's not. Don't be, you, 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 don't be worried about it, actually. It's a positive thing that you're smelling the product strong because therefore the ammonia content into the bowl has, with the peroxide has taken what's needed and the remaining of the ammonia, which is a gas that is not needed, is being released out of your bowl. So that's the smell that you smell. So it's coming out. So you just have what is needed in the bowl according to your formulation. Now the processing time, um, it could be 20 to 30 minutes, depending again, the hair you're working for. So uh, again, for my friend in Brazil, I would suggest that maybe uh, start with 20, check how it is. If you feel that you still need a little bit more coverage, well, next time proceed to 25 or to 30 till you find it that is best performing with you. Okay, so I hope that this has helped you into your question. 30 volume, well, 30 volume, what's the difference? It's, I know sometimes they say, well, I'll use 30 volume to cover white hair. The problem with 30 volume, yes, it has more oxygen in, so it does have enough oxygen to trigger um, the, um, the ammonia content needed to cover the white hair. However, once it has taken the um, quantity needed to cover the white hair, there is more oxygen left into your activator. So from 20 to 30, there's about 10 times more left into it. So the extra oxygen left into your color is basically contributing to lift. In white hair, we don't need the lift. We need deposit. So therefore, 30 volume for me, if I'm looking for depositing on white hair, is not necessarily the recommended activator. However, do I use it sometime? Yes, in exceptional cases, and I will share with you that later in formulation, how do I approach that? So my optimal choice for working with white hair coverage is basically your 20 volume that you're hearing, seeing here, okay? Okay, good. So creating the perfect formula. Well, that goes with the client's hair that you have assessed before. The desired result that you have is basically combining together and you're looking what you're looking for. So create the perfect white hair coverage formula consists of what is the client percentage of white hair? Which of the natural family would you use? What are the mixing ratio for the white hair coverage? And what is the best processing time for it? So here, first again, if we go see again, percentage of white hair, I have 30, 50, 75, and 90% to 100%. I split that in two. So anything below 50% is I could use my view, uh, my demi-acidic color for a white hair blending. So basically I just want to create a nice soft camouflage with uh, minimum maintenance. So this is something that could be very good also to um, if you just wanted to uh, camouflage the white hair and with zero shift of the natural hair. So this is an excellent choice. Remember your natural series will be the choice that you need to add to your formula to get the coverage you're looking for. A mask with vibrochrome, your double five, like I explained earlier, and your mask with vibrochrome 20 or 30 if you need some lift and coverage, in this case under 50%. If you're working above 50%, naturally, it will be your mass with vibrochrome, your natural family integrated into it, plus 20 volume activator, exceptionally truly in some specific cases. So which of the natural family is best for the desired result? So choosing the appropriate natural family for white hair coverage when mixing a natural with a reflected nuance is very important, okay? So that you get desired result that you're looking for. Here is one of my favorite shades. I like reds, um, so 6 comma 6, 6. This is a visual that gives you an idea a little bit what the shade looks like. Um, here is if it's mixed with a natural warm, level 6. So you're seeing here, this is a warm tone. This is basically the 6 comma 6, 6, and this is the result. This is your cool tone. This is applied on a 6 comma 6, 6, and look at the result. So a 6.1 with a comma 6.6, 6, your color is cooler. A 6 natural warm series with your 6 comma 6.6, 6, the color is brighter, warmer. What are you looking for? In this case, a 6 comma 0 would be a great choice because it's giving you a closer result to what you're seeing here or here. So it is more true to target result. And here you're seeing if I mix it with my double natural, what's happening to the color is I'm getting more depth. 
into my color. So the color is a little bit more darker. Let's see another one. Let's go see a warm tone, your 8 comma 4 4. Your 8 comma 4 4, when mixed with your natural warm series, you're getting true to target result. You're looking at it and it's pretty identical. However, if I mix it with an 8.1, remember 0.1 is a blue base. So what does it do to your copper? It mutes it down. Your zero, your natural neutral series, due to the bluish grayish base, it will slightly mute down the results. So that's why you're seeing the copper less bright than what you're seeing here. And if you mix it with your double natural, you're seeing here from your natural to double natural is you're providing more depth to the color. So therefore the color looks a little bit more darker. So you as the artist have a choice to choose whatever you want. If you want your color to be muted down, then choose, you could choose 8.1. If you wanted to have a little bit softer mutation, mute uh, of the color, and then you could use your eight comma zero. But the optimal choice for me would be the eight natural warm series. Okay, my formulation is based on 40 grams of color to 60 grams of activator. Um, my percentage of white hair again, here up to 50%. I do not need to uh, have, here it is, so I do not need to add the target color uh, into it. So I just, uh, sorry, the natural family into it. I just put target color. Um, 50 to 75%, I add 15 grams of my natural family to 25 grams of my target color. And to uh, up to 100%, I don't use it that way often, but you could go up to half and half. However, do take in consideration that you may slightly modify the reflected tone of the desired result you're looking for. Um, so basically here it is, I rarely use it. Um, so it's something that uh, in the most extreme case that I will do. Um, also too, this is based on a 40 gram. You may adjust your formula depending on the hair density. You may need 50 gram, you may need 30 grams. So adjust the formulation accordingly. Okay. So here is dealing with um, located white hair. Located white hair is mostly found, um, do you ever do a peroxide rinse on resistant hair? Okay, good question. Um, no, uh, I don't. For simple reason, um, pre-softening hair with peroxide is peroxide has a pH of 2.5, so therefore it's acidic. At a pH of 2.5, it has no ability to swell the hair and open the cuticle on its own. So basically, you're just putting um, a moisture product. And usually when we used to do that, a, um, a peroxide softening to the hair, we used to put a plastic cap and put it under the dryer. So therefore, the moisture and the heat provided the swelling. So here is you don't want to use heat because heat will increase sensitivity of the scalp. And you don't use peroxide on its own due to its acidic pH of a 2.5. So it has no ability of opening. What you need is alkalinity. You need the alkalinity to start the swelling. So therefore here is what I do is I choose the natural family according to the desired result that I'm looking for. So here to pre-soften technique is basically I take the color of the natural family that I'm supposed to use out of the tube. So therefore I have pure alkalinity and I'm applying it softly to the located white hair area and in not over applying it, just depositing a sheer application of the product. Then I let it process for five minutes and I will towel block excess if I deposit too much. And during that time, I will go and mix my color formulation of my desired result. Since there is no white hair into the back, therefore I will mix my color with strictly target result. There will be no natural family incorporated into it. So then I'm applying my color formulation on the pre-softened area first. So, so this is where I would start first my application. And what's happening there is the pigment that you applied it pure before will intermix with your formula, customizing that area, a color that has your natural family incorporated into your formula. And it will increase slightly the amount of pigment in there versus to the activator, giving you a little bit more of a power fuel to cover white hair. And then you let your color process uh, for 35 minutes or 45 minutes, depending on the hair diameter that you're working with and then your follow-up with your standard post-color care services. So this is how I approach 
um, this um, question. Okay, uh, going back to the course here, processing for up to 10 minutes or longer, can you please find under a heat lamp and process for 25 minutes? Heat lamp, no, um, because heat lamp, it's, it's not a control environment. However, if you do have a roller ball, um, if you do have um, um, an, uh, a hair master, a climazone, um, these are infrared accelerators. So therefore, yes, you could reduce your processing time of 10 minutes in that case. Um, what about going up to 50 minutes? Will it be darker? If you're working with mask with vibrochrome, no, the color will not go darker than what you have formulated. So I'm not concerned if you go up to 50 minutes. Um, there is for me, there's no issue for that. Um, however, if you're working with a new color, every MEA base color or non-ammonia base color, um, with processing time, the color goes a little bit more darker uh, and darker. So if you process it for um, 50 minutes, your color will be more darker. However, if you're working with coarser or darker, uh, that coarser or thicker hair, you may want to have that additional deposit of color. So this is up to you to decide um, how to adjust your color in this case. Um, back to high density in the case of warm 844, add extra 25% of the natural. How about altering the volume of Catalyst. Um, no, here in the case of here, if I have a high density, in case of a warm 844 at extra 25% of level nine, how about altering the, the, the activator? You just want to make it a little bit lighter, but don't forget if you increase your activator and there's a high amount of white hair, um, you may not have enough uh, coverage in that case. I would still recommend to work with the 20 volume in that case. Um, it's, it's not a bad idea, but if I want maximum uh, pigment deposit there, because by using a 30 volume is you're providing lift to the color. So a little bit less coverage. Good, good, good. So I got to see the question a little bit differently now here. Good, good. So let me try to reduce it because it's covering my entire page. Whoops. Okay. I'll push it on the side here. Sorry for that. Okay, any other question? Those are a very good question. Maybe I missed a few and I haven't seen it, so good. Okay, two level lighter would be recommended for thicker hair. Listen, um, this is case per case. Um, it could be one level lighter for coarse thicker hair, two level lighter for coarse thicker hair. It's really case per case and this is where um, it comes in to customizing the formula. Um, so however, um, you always start with to be lighter than too dark because if you're too dark and the client wishes to be lighter, it is harder to remove and to bring lighter. If the color is lighter, a little bit too light, it's always easier to darken after. Okay, sorry guys, I'm just not used to see all the questions like this, so it's a little bit different because the two other presentations were on Zoom. So good. Um, here looking light would be okay. perfect. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is here. A uh, mixed color well for optimal color performance and results. This is a very important to make sure that the color is well mixed. Um, therefore, if you do not mix your color very well, therefore all the activator is not integrated to your color, the ammonia may not be activated very well. Sometimes you see some of the activator on the side of the bowl. Uh, be precise into your measurement. Make sure that you're using your scale to measure your color properly so you have the right mixing ratio and naturally your technical skills. Working with caustic hair, always double check your application cross check. Also to hot spots and stuff like that, meaning that the color is rebelling itself from the application area you put some. Um, those are often caused either by um, body heat temperatures a bit higher than normal, so they activate the sweat gland. The sweat gland is releasing the pressure, so it propels the color away from the scalp. So therefore, it needs a little bit less color, so it gives you an oxidation of being a little bit brighter or less coverage. Cross-sectioning after a color is revisiting that to make sure that there's no color that has 
propel the weight from the scalp area and you're resecuring it. So basically after your 15 minutes or your five minutes of application, usually you can double check and reposition the color to where it's supposed to be and it will stay then, okay? Cool, so let's go see some case studies here a little bit. So here I have a client who's a uh, whose target level is uh, 8.3. We'll say that she's 75%. Oh, what happened here? Why did it move? 75% white. Um, so, and so here is I do have into my natural series that I could use. Naturally for an 8.3, what would be my optimal result would be here would be my natural warm because I am complementing the warm series. So therefore natural cool would not be recommended. Even my natural neutral, could I use it? Yes, I could. What would happen to my 8.3? I would mute the color slightly. So it will be less vibrant, less gold, it will be softer. So if that's what you're looking for, then there is no problem with that. That's perfect, you could look for, for that. Um, so, here. So here I would use my eight natural warm. My target color again is an eight comma three and we'll look at normal textured hair. So therefore my processing time will be 35 minutes. So my formula in this case will be 15 grams of my eight, 25 grams of my um, eight comma three and 60 grams of my 20 volume. So this would be my formula here that I would work with. In the case you did this client and her color, um, when she comes back next time, she said, you know, Rod, I really like my color. It's really nice, but I feel there's a little bit of uh, uh, transparency. I feel that the white hair maybe did not cover well. Um, there's a technique that's called buyback, basically, is you're buying additional pigment to cover white hair. So basically, if she feels that she still see a bit of white, means that she's seeing transparency. Transparency, how do we solve that? Is we add depth. And how would I would change her formula here is uh, basically, I would go example, 10 grams of eight, five grams of my seven, and I would go 25 grams of my eight comma three because she said, Rock, I like my color. So therefore you cannot modify this. Your modification has to be within your 15 gram. And then 60 grams of my 20 volume here. So this is what I would use in the case if she feel that her hair was not covered very well. So let's go see another case scenario here. So here I have my client wants a 731. 731, you have a few options. We'll go again, 75% white. Um, into my white hair, your natural family, what I have um, into it is I could use my natural warm here, here because I have a tree in here. So that will complement the tree. So the color will be a little bit warmer. Could I use my natural cool? Yes, because I have a one. So this four, it will cool down the color. And could I use a neutral? Yes, I could use a neutral to keep it as balanced as what it is. I notice that I don't select a double natural in here uh, in this case. So just say if I were to choose example, my color uh, natural warm, because that's for me, that's what I would choose for. So I would choose basically my seven natural warm. Uh, target color is my 731. And actually I put a little bit plus next to it because I'm enhancing it with the natural warm family. And we'll say that the hair is basically maybe, um, normal for now, and I will increase it to become coarser. So again, here my mixing ratio would be 15 grams of my seven, 25 grams of my seven comma 31, and then 60 grams of my 20 volume. Just say that again, she has now coarse hair. So I will say coarse hair. So here I could switch it in saying that I will use 10 gram of my six, five grams of my seven, and 25 grams of my seven, three, one, and 60 grams of my 20 volume. Just gonna check if there's any question. 
Um, question here is also, can medication affect the coverage? Certain medication could affect um, coverage because it will affect the manufacture of the hair. Um, because hair is nourished by blood and blood is basically, uh, if we take medication, it goes into a blood system. So it could affect, but it cannot always, it's not all necessarily always the cause. Um, uh, thyroid uh, medication, um, it creates a bit of complication, but often white hair coverage is related into formulation, finding the right formulation. Um, so um, it's for us to find which one is the right formulation. So, but again, certain medication could affect white hair. So here, how I adjust it here. So again, I use 10 gram of the six in this case here and five grams of the 725. My processing time will go here now 45 minutes. Okay. Okay, so we have a six six. So here, I want to show you another one here because I just have to move a little bit forward in the presentation. The standard mixing ratio is here. Uh, if you're looking here, is one to one point five. My target color is eight point three seventy five percent coarse hair. So I did hear the formula here that you're seeing. It's not giving me the coverage, so therefore I move to the second one. So now here you're seeing the differences. Is I increasing the five gram of seven now to 10 gram of seven? I still feel that it did not give me the coverage that I'm looking for. So here is now what I'm doing is now I'm going to go and bring in my double natural, but I bring in my double natural in a different way. You have to remember that five grams of double natural gives you the double amount of pigment. So basically it kind of give me like almost equal to 10 grams of a single natural family. If we want to look at it this way to better understand. So therefore I do 10 grams of my eight, five grams of level nine, nine comma zero. Why my nine, nine comma zero, not an eight is because remember your double natural gives you more depth. So therefore, I wanted to maintain the level eight. So this is why I choose one level above. So my equal, my five grams of double nine gives me the strength of 10 gram. So my color is more powerful now in covering and 25 grams of my eight comma three with 60, okay? However, here, this is what I would do in the salon. Whenever I add my double natural, remember what your double natural is. It is a grayish blue base, so therefore it has the ability to mute down your reflected color. So therefore to compensate for the blue gray base there is in my nine nine, my formula in my personal taste would be 10 grams of eight, five grams of nine nine comma zero, 20 grams of eight comma three, and five grams of 833. So basically I'm adding gold to my formula to compensate the effect of my 990 in there. And again, 60 gram of my 20 volume. So see the progression that I did to adjust the color in there. And all I did is my adjusting of my color is always within the 15 gram and I never change my mixing ratio. So making sure that I'm keeping my reflect at full strength, okay? Cool, so amazing, thank you for sharing. Okay, perfect, for the win. I love A33, like in the video of Austin Power. I love gold, and if you ever take my color mentoring class, you will discover that A33 is my go-to. Um, so, um, question is, would it be possible to watch it later? I think so, Jack will be able to answer that if he's still present in there. He's the administrator of the uh, platform. So just wanted to share something else with you. Um, how do I approach that? Um, if you take my class, you'll discover that 25% is the magic number um, of all that I do. See, 25% here. 25% is whenever I add additive or whenever I modify a color, that's my go-to number. Um, so here I did a 15 grams of eight comma three, 25, uh, sorry, 15 gram of eight natural warm, 25 grams of eight comma three and 60 gram of color did not give me the coverage I'm looking for. So therefore, I'm working with extremely coarse, coarse resistant hair. So I'm gonna do a modification. Remember, the formula is recommended to be mixed one part color to 1.5 uh, 
part of oxidative uh, solution peroxide, your activator. So here, the 25% here would bring me down, if I do 25% of 60, would bring me down to the quantity of 45 grams. So now I have a mixture that is almost half and half. There's five grams more. That five grams makes a difference. However, the formula was created to achieve optimal white hair coverage if you mix one part color to 1.5 part of activator 20 volume. Therefore here by having less activator, I do not have enough oxygen to trigger the ammonia content into my color to give me the proper oxidation process of the color to give me the right strength to swell the hair, open the cuticle and deposit the color. So therefore I have an issue here. I have a mixing ratio that is not giving me enough fuel. So therefore, how do I get more oxygen into my color? It's just by changing it now to 30 volume. So now you see where do I use my 30 volume. So by changing it now in a lower quantity of 45 grams to 30 volume, what I'm doing now is I'm getting a formula that has a strength of 20, just a little bit above 20 volume, that is giving me the right amount of oxygen to develop, um, to activate the ammonia content properly, to provide me proper softening and swelling of the cuticle structure and proper enough oxygen into the formula to give me proper oxidation or polarization of the pigment to give me target color. So this is how do I use it. Now, this is like your worst case scenario that you're not capable of covering white hair. In my case, I only probably have five clients in the salon that I have this type of formulation on them. It's because they have coarse, thick, extremely glossy hair. And that's the only way I am capable of achieving that. So it must not become your crutches. It must not become your go-to formula because as you can see here, you had option one, two, three, four before you arrive to this one. Okay, so here I have some question. Awesome class, and if it would be to run share to my team into salon. Okay, hi, Maria. I'm not planning to have you specific topic, but drop will run other classes next. Okay, so this is uh, mentioning, okay, the question if there will be another classes on this. Cool, so I hope this a little bit case scenario here of white hair coverage kind of helped you a little bit more to understand how I approach white hair. And now just to say dual color application, this is my favorite. Um, you must remember when you're working with a dual color, uh, when you're working with white hair coverage, now let me rephrase that. Whenever you're putting white hair coverage is you're mixing target result with a natural family. The reason why we're doing that is to achieve white hair coverage. Mid length and end, there is no white hair. So therefore, if you were to emulsify that color to mid length and end or to pull that color into mid length and end to refresh tone, since there is no white hair, your natural family that you have in your formula will interfere the reflection of the color now because it does not have a purpose to cover white hair because there's none. So therefore, for me, I'm applying my mask with vibrochrome with my target color in my natural family at the scalp area, and I like to refresh mid length and end with our demi permanent hair color. And I always, before I refresh it, I miss the mid length and end with day day, um, which I use as a porosity equalizer to even saturation of my color. And I could use either my mask with vibrochrome with five volume to be as a demi alkaline hair color to refresh the color, or my go to, which is actually my um, my love color is VIEW. Um, VIEW is a demi-permanent acidic of a pH of 6,8. Um, therefore, it has the ability of closing the cuticle, creating a shield around the hair to increase the shine, increasing the vibrancy of your color, increasing specifically the quality of the hair, and um, gives you beautiful, beautiful quality color results. So how do I work? I apply my mask with Vibrochrome formula at the new growth or my new color formula at the new growth. And I refresh mid length and end by 
taking my day day, missed a mid length and end to balance porosity, and I apply my view that is formulated with my 10 volume applied from mid length and end. Within the processing time, the last 20 minutes of the processing time. Now a little cue and a little tips in here. If I'm utilizing example uh, 932 in mask for my new growth application, I will use 932 for mid length and length, mid length and end. So I would use 932 to half of gloss. I always refresh the color with a level a little bit lighter. So I would take example, maybe 15 grams of 932, 15 grams of gloss. So it's diluting it a little bit because remember color on color makes it darker. The last thing your client wants to see is darker hair. Example, if I have a 6 comma 6, 6, I will utilize my view 6 comma 6, 6 with gloss half and half. So I am just refreshing the tone of mid length and end. You could decrease the amount of gloss depending on how much deposit is needed. If your color has faded to level, therefore I would use it directly uh, as toned uh, into your bottle. Okay, so any question from here? No, looks pretty good. Good. Oh, here I may have some. What are the going if I leave the color longer 15 minutes? Okay, Rock, going back to your course and processing up for 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I saw that, so we answered that. Okay, good. Good. And you call gloss zero. zero. Um, in view, it's called gloss. So um, zero, 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 that's in mask with vibrochrome or a new color. That's not a gloss. In mask with vibrochrome, it's either a booster or a dilute. And into a new color, zero, zero, zero is a booster. So it's two different things. So whenever I say gloss, it's because I'm talking of here view, the one that I have my little heart on on the slide that's right over there. Okay. So finalizing with is I got uh, now the post color care services. This is my, my favorite. The smell of this product, the quality and the performance is just stunning. Um, I'm a big natural tech user. I, I love the line. It's a much more prescriptive line to versus to the essential category. Um, so here is I have natural tech nourishing shampoos, a renewing shampoo. The word by itself, it says renewing, renewing all the natural element that is needed to have healthier hair, healthier scalp. Um, so basically, so I'm utilizing the shampoo for as my post color care and I will use the uh, renewing conditioning treatment. It could be applied from scalp, mid length and end. It will deposit proper nutrient for the scalp and in for the hair. Processing time may go from five to 10 minutes. Naturally respecting the processing time up to 10 minutes, you're getting all the benefit of the product. Um, so this is definitely recommendation and also into retail my client. Calming, if you remember the client that I said that the first five or 15 minutes that if they feel a little bit of a sensitivity to the scalp due to dryness of the scalp, calming is a nice product um, with superfactant into it that um, it will um, super active, not super effectant, super active product into it that will calm the scalp after a technical service. Um, a little tricks, what I like is when the client is laying into the back bar sink, um, I just like to spray one mist just above the hair so that she smells the product coming down near her and it, the smell of calming is so, uh, aromatherapy is so calming that it just makes the client relax at the sink. I'm just talking about it. I just kind of smell the product instantly and it just brings me instantly in that comfort zone mood. Uh, so that's a nice um, little product there you could use at the same time at the sink. Um, renewing serum um, also too, um, it's a super active product that will deposit the right element at the scalp. You do not rinse. So this one is you do not rinse and you apply scalp mid leg and end and you massage it in. And by utilizing this product, it's like you're giving high hydration to the scalp to have better elasticity, follicle will relax, you will stimulate healthier hair growth in that category and applying to mid length and end also to give additional uh, nutriment to the hair. 
Um, if you remember also too, in my tree, symptoms of white hair, mature hair, what is happening here, they lose density. Uh, so therefore, this is an amazing product here to promote and to recommend, the Energizing Thickening Tonic. Um, what it does, it's basically, it's a cosmetic product, but it increased the hair diameter of 5%. So if you're increasing the hair diameter of 5%, you're giving the client the feeling that she has a little bit more hair. So, um, so when she's passing her hand into it, she's feeling more hair. And by having more hair, you're giving the hair more body and more hold into it. So this is also to a great product. You apply into hair. Again, you do not rinse, you leave it on. And every time you shampoo your hair, it is to put back into the hair. So my home care regime that I would recommend to the client. Um, so if using mask with vibrocone, would you also, sorry, there's a question coming in. So diluted the middle length and end length with five volume on the same pot. Okay, so good question. Um, let me finish this and I will come back to your question right away, right after. So if I'm looking here at the energizing thickening tonic, um, so they're the right clientele to promote this product. It's cosmetic, meaning at the next shampoo, it'll be gone, she needs to put back in. Remember, three product to promote. What I would promote my client is the shampoo, the conditioner, and depending on the hair, if thickness is important for her, I would recommend this. If scalp is I need hydration, then I would recommend this. So you always present the product with the value and benefit that it's giving your client. Um, so, and this is a great time to do it when you're doing at the sink. Um, believe me, when you're especially talking about this one here, they want it. Um, it's an amazing product. I use it personally and I do see the differences uh, in there. So, um, I have questions here. So the question here is, could, when if I were to refresh mid length and end with mask with Viber Chrome, uh, so basically applying my white hair coverage formula at the new growth and refreshing tone in the ends. Um, would you dilute it with zero, 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 or would you work with five or 10 volume? No, in the case here, if the level lighter is available, then I would use the level lighter. In the case of six comma six, six, there is no seven, six, six. So therefore you have the option of utilizing your six comma six, six, your zero, zero, zero with mask, you will dilute it. So therefore you can mix it um, 15 gram of zero, zero, zero and to 25 gram of six comma six, six, depending on the density and the length of the hair, you mix it with your double five, you have diluted the level of your six comma six, six, and therefore you could refresh it that way. I would not use 10 volume in that case. I would always stick to my five volume because I don't want to trigger too much ammonia content. I want to deposit color. Utilizing my 10 volume will give me more oxygen. Therefore, I would trigger more ammonia content. And I don't want that because I don't want to increase sensitivity of mid-length and end. Any tips on pre-treatment for scalp since Glorifier is discontinued? Yeah, I know Glorifier is discontinued and it's, it's a product that I love a lot too. And I cross my finger that maybe one day it might come back due to popular demand. Um, so yes, um, my solution for me is the Royal Jelly, uh, Jelly Royal Jelly, Jelly Royal, yeah, Royal Jelly from Nourishing from Natural Tech. Uh, sorry, I had to think French and English because I often say that in French. Um, so it's a super hydrating treatment that you leave on the scalp. So in the case of my extreme sensitive client, I would sell them the nourishing um, royal jelly and she could apply it on her scalp 24 hours prior to the service because we always say do not wash your hair 24 hours before especially if you have sensitive scalp to color and this will uh, hydrate the skin extremely so it will give you additional moisture to the scalp to make the color process much more gentler to the, the client. Um, naturally if the irritation is caused just because of the ammonia release you always have the option with an ammonia based color or a non ammonia based color such as a new color and also to you have the calming uh, spray that you could spray at the end which is an oil you cannot put it before since it's an oil if you put it before the color it will um, Destroy, the color will destroy the benefit of the calming oil because the alkalinity of the color will simply just destroy the oil. So you cannot use calming before. 
Um, oh, thank you for saying that the French sounds better. Jolie Royale. Okay, so that's good. That's good, good, good. Any other questions? So is there any other question, guys? Hope uh, this class has enlightened you a little bit on white hair coverage. Um, this could be a full day program um, on white hair. I, I do some when I travel uh, into the States, a full day white hair coverage. So naturally here, I just give you a little bit of pieces and bits and we went pretty fast. But uh, if you do wish to find more information, there will be classes available whenever we get back into our more regular routine. Any tips on application technique according to natural fall, please? Natural fall, if you're doing a standard application, is not important. Natural fall for me is only important whenever you're designing colors such as balayage, freehand painting, um, color placement, and stuff like that. For normal color retouch, natural fall for me is not important. I use basically my four quadrant sectioning and I subdivide the back of the neck from ears to ear in the back. And then I start my application most of the time into the nape area. So uh, no for white hair coverage, there's no uh, natural fall for me. Thank you, leaving, uh, learning from you. Thank you so much, thank you Dalton. You were back today, Dalton. Nice to see you again. Uh, Betchenka, then this means zero zero has less ammonia than an activator. An activator does not have ammonia. Um, so here the question is, um, this, mean zero zero has less ammonia than an activator or is just diluter. The zero 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 has ammonia strength same as a level 10, identical to a level 10 except it's pigmentless. It has no pigment. Um, activator has no ammonia, has no alkaline. It has a pH of a 2.5. So therefore an activator is an acidic. So there is your opposite. So this is why that one needs the other to activate it. You need your activator to activate the release of the ammonia or the alkaline solution. So you need the activator to do that. And to release the oxygen of your activator, you need the ammonia or the alkaline solution to do so. So therefore your zero, zero, zero could be used to be diluting your color, or it could be used saying if we want to use the word booster to give you that additional level, but by diluting it, you're getting that additional level. Okay. Without increasing the strength of your color. Uh, you do. Add a, oh. <laughs> Hi, Anna. <laughs> Have to be careful what I say eh, for the white hair coverage. Shh. Okay. Um, Dalton, uh -huh. Anna, it has a lot of secrets. Yeah, she has a lot of secrets from rocks for colors. Um, okay. Thank you. What a friend to combine zero, zero for retouch in mid ends. Thank you so much. Zero, 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 if you're doing white hair coverage, be careful. Don't add it into your formula unless you want to create a specific level letter. If you add zero, zero, zero for white hair coverage, you're diluting the weight of your color. So there will be less pigment into your bowl. Therefore, there will be less pigment within the core of the hair. So your coverage may not be uh, right where I recommend to use the zero, zero, zero. If you do not have view to refresh mid length and end, and you wish to create a level lighter, there you could use your zero, zero, zero with your color, your target color, and with your double five volume. Don't use it for white hair coverage, okay? Um, Sylvana is laughing, so I think I know what she's laughing for. I won't say it. Okay. Um, Love you, Sylvana. Uh, okay, guys, any other question? No? So we could call it a wrap. Okay, thank you, Rock. Uh, oh, hi, Eric. Hope you're doing well. Okay, good, 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 good. So I will, Sandra, superstar in Toronto, Chris. Welcome, Chris, Dalton. Hope to see you guys soon. Miss you all. Hope we're going to go back to our normal routine soon. Hey, Michael. Ça fait plaisir. Gina. Okay. 
Oh, not Michael, Michelle. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Garcia. Uh, Garcia, are you from Lithuania? Poland, okay. We met before, right? Yes, okay, I thought so. Oh, thank you for joining the class. Good, yes, in October. Yes, correct. Good.